good afternoon, everyone. It's three guys and a girl again in the Bible. Uh, today is day four of uh, our our church's uh, four day or seven days of of prayer and fasting. And so we thought today we'd do something a little different. We haven't really done this the other days, and that's just actually talk about the the topic that's in our our guide, our our fasting and and prayer guide for the week and. Uh, the, the topic for today for us to focus on, the question to ask ourselves is, is do we have the heart of God? Specifically, um, there's a passage from 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 4 that, that says this, our God wants all people to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. That is the very heart of our God. And so... Um, you know, as you think about that, as you pray about that, what, is it, what do you think it means to have the heart of God in your guys' lives? Um, I was, I was kind of getting the Romans 12, 9 um, in my mind is that don't pretend to love others. Actually love them um, and hate what's wrong. I think those two are the um, most simple things to have the heart of God. Yeah, yeah. I kind of look at that. As to have the heart of God, you have to have the eyes of God. And right in front of my desk on the big whiteboard, it's I, I've, I've put there, you know, Father, let me see them through your eyes. And then that follows along with his heart. Because it's so easy to look at people and, you know, pass judgment on what? On their outer appearance. Yeah. And that's not what God looks at. He looks at their heart. And we have to remember that these people that that might look like they don't care they're struggling. And we have to look at them through the eyes of God and, and just have that compassion, that empathy towards them as to, this is a child of God. This is someone that Jesus loved enough that he gave yeah. his life for. Who am I to pass judgment on that? Like Hosanna, the song, the, the lyric, break my heart for what breaks yours, man. That's oh, a, that, that, that part. Powerful. Powerful. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, the uh, reality of, of <clears throat> excuse me, what we're doing um, this week and, and spending that devoted time in prayer um, to God and, and combining that with uh, depriving ourselves of, of something. Um, you know, I, I, I think of the, the heart of Jesus and his willingness to come to this earth and depriving himself of heaven <laughs> and, yeah. and not that he changed mm -hmm. his status; he was still fully God, but he was here. Um, he was here among us, yeah. Among us, and then furthermore, he he subjected himself to his creation. Um, that's his heart. Is, is he was so all in for us and saving us that that he allowed his creation to to harm him in every possible way, mentally, physically, emotionally, um, and uh, just. You know, we, we, we complain about the things people say about us or the way people treat us or, or whatever else. And um, having the heart of God, I'm not complaining about that, but if, if, if they're treating us those ways because of him, because of our love for Jesus, because of how we react and respond and, and treat others as a Christian, um, then, then we shouldn't be feeling sorry for ourselves. You know, <laughs> we, we should have the heart of God in, in those situations. Yeah, we're um, <clears throat> going through the, the fruit of the Spirit right now uh, down in Children's Church. And so uh, this is a wonderful way that you can even talk to your kids this week about having the heart of God. Um, and sometimes, you know, whenever I go through the list, I kind of skim through it or just kind of, I've heard that a million times before, but just really meditating on each word um, and asking myself, am I, am I having that reaction? Am I having that posture in my life of peace and patience um, and gentleness um, and just really, yeah, evaluating that because those are very easy ways that, you know, very uh, easy characteristics that we can see in our lives if we are having that, that spirit and that heart of God. Absolutely. Um, I think incorporating those in is, is huge because then that's, that's putting the heart of God on display, you know, in your life for, for everyone. I know, uh, I think it was yesterday, uh, Ken and I were having a conversation that it kind of relates to this and that, you know, if, if we're choosing to have the heart of God, it's it's also very easy to look around to the people around us and and expect them to have that same heart, expect them to think the same way, act the same way, speak the same way, treat others the same way. And the reality is uh, most people won't. 
Yeah. Uh, they don't have the heart of God in mind. Yeah. And so um, that means we have to <clears throat> double down yeah. on having that heart for them mm-hmm. um, not condemning them because they don't understand. They, they don't have that heart of God. They don't even know what that would mean if we would bring that up uh, to them. So remembering that and, and having patience and, and putting those fruit on display with those people that do not have the heart of God yet. Keyword. Right. Yet. Absolutely. Um, how do you think, you know, as uh, I, I, don't, I don't want to use the word suffering because I, I don't think we're suffering, uh, but as that, that hunger uh, persists on into the afternoon and depending on, you know, what time Ken and I got home last night, well into the evening <laughs> before uh, a dinner rolls around our direction, um, you know, how can we experience the heart of God in, in those kinds of situations? Or if, if we are suffering, literally, if, if there's something going on in our families or there's a tragedy that's happened, um, how, can we, how can we reflect on having that heart of God in those moments? Well, I mean, Jesus never, never lost his love for us whenever he was in the midst of his suffering. So that's something we can always look back on and realize if we're, if we're trying to live like him, that's, that's a key factor. Absolutely. The scripture that you used when we opened, you know, God's longing to see people come to him. And we, you know, to not to trivialize, trivialize that, but we have, you know, when we're feeling those hunger pains, we're longing for food. And it kind of gives us an insight as to, as you know, a much smaller scale, obviously, but how God longs. For people to come to him to know his love and to I think the best part of this is that God loves us exactly where we are no matter how many uh, dumb mistakes we've made in our life he loves us where we are and he's accepting and that's where we have to be with with the heart of God within us is that we have to love people where we are and, and Chris you've been you've been teaching me that not on purpose, but just by watching you and how you how you love people just to where they are. Because it's so easy, especially as church leaders, to say, if they would only be here more, if they would only read their Bible more, if they would only serve more, Yeah. but maybe they're not ready for that. We just have to love them where they are because that's what God did for us. And encouraging them then to, to keep moving. Moving forward, one step closer. Um, one one step closer. That's that's going to be the goal. Um, there's two parts to that passage that I read. Um, our God wants wants everyone to be saved. Yes, He does. And unfortunately, we we oftentimes are satisfied with that. Okay, that's the heart of God. He wants everyone to be saved, and to come to a knowledge of the truth. <laughs> um, and so it's more than just salvation. Though yeah. we could probably have a debate as to salvation, knowledge of the truth, and how those two things are probably very much intertwined. You cannot separate them, even though we try. Yeah. Um, but that is, that is equally as important. And so, you know, believers that we talk to and people that have been quote-unquote saved but resist the truth of Scripture. Oh, well, that's not really what God's Word said. Or, yeah. or that doesn't apply to my life. Or, yeah, that's not a... Uh, it's a very slippery slope there. It, yeah. <laughs> the heart of God is for you to know and accept His truth. Um, and I think to, to actively seek it as well, not just to assume that these things <clears throat> will come naturally and that, you know, he will just start speaking to me and I will then know his truth, but just seeking it out and making sure that you are really wanting to pursue that relationship. Um, and I think that this is the most wonderful opportunity to do so, to say, hey, Lord, I am setting aside my wants and I am giving you this space, um, yeah, to really, to sought after you. Absolutely. Well, we hope you're having a great uh, day four of of this uh this unity uh time of the church our week-long uh, fasting and prayer and we're really longing for this weekend and, and gathering everyone together and hearing their stories and even sharing in some food that evening on sunday night and and a night of worship it's we know it's going to be incredible so thank you again for joining us on this thursday edition and uh, we we pray that your day is going well and that uh, maybe today god can reveal a piece of his heart to you that uh, maybe you haven't experienced before so long from, from three guys and a girl and a girl in the Bible.